stuff in Soria. But I think it was a really good first test. Uh, we've scrimmaged uh, FGCU multiple times. Uh, it's always a really good game, I think, for both teams. I thought uh, they did some really good things that uh, we know we have to improve in, and I think we did a few things that they, they'll probably be working on as well. And that's what these games are for, these exhibitions and closed door scrimmages, are to kind of find out about your personnel. You know, we've been playing against each other all summer and all fall. The first time you, you face another opponent, so there's always an adjustment there for everyone. And I thought our guys did a really good job, especially in the second half, of responding and, and getting better and growing through the process. And it was great to see our turnout, you know, for an exhibition game, to see people in the stands for the first time for our players. Uh, that's, that's big because that gives them kind of a feel how the environment's going to be. Of course, there'll be more people, but a feel for people in there cheering and, and rooting. So uh, I thought ultimately it was, it was a very positive, you know, game for, for both teams. Uh, Coach Don Struble, Black and Gold Banneret. Uh, at Media Day, you expressed the need to build continuity and chemistry. How do you feel that the team reflected that process in today's preseason test, especially with the loss of Jalen? Uh, well, I think you definitely saw that we, we could continue to get better in that area. Uh, you know, guys have some individual talents, and that's really good. Now we got to put all those pieces together where we're working, you know, in the same direction or pulling in the same direction. Uh, not that they're not trying, it's just that we all bring something different to the, to the game and, and know the strengths that we recruited them for. So now we have to blend those things you know, with one another to make the team maximize you know, what they're capable of doing out there. And that's what we'll continue to work on. Coach, just speak about the loss and Jalen Sellers going down in the second half. I mean, what is, what, what's, their, what's their current uh, status? Uh, uh, still to be determined. I need to find out exactly you know, what's going on. I know he's going to get some imaging and then we'll kind of see what happens. But as of right now, uh, you know, we're just praying that, that he's going to be okay. And, and that's the extent of, uh, of what I know. Coach, I have to ask, in, in a low, like, in what, look in the bigger picture of a low stakes exhibition match, was there consideration of maybe like canceling the game after Jalen went down for that extended period of time? Uh, it, was, it was one of those things that we considered or I considered from the standpoint of, you know, what it meant to not just our teams, but what it meant to to our, our fans, our student body that, that came and attended the game. And, uh, and, and thinking about it, I looked at the fact that FGCU had traveled you know, up here today and uh, as part of their experience and part of what they're trying to do. So I had to you know, take that in consideration as well and opted you know, just to let our guys play and, and was hoping that he would, you know, would, be, would get better. And uh, that's what we're gonna see when we leave here. Uh, Coach, you guys uh, shot pretty well from the perimeter today, 8 of 18, but 43% of your p points came in the paint. Uh, how important was it to produce scoring down low, even though you were shooting well from the perimeter? Uh, very important. You know, we're a team that we want to balance the offense. So we don't want to just be a, a three-point shooting team. We don't want to be just an all-thought inside team. We want to balance the offense. I think basketball is funnest that way, when, when everybody's involved and everybody can get touches. And so, you know, by having our guys play to their strengths, I thought we did a really good job of, of touching the paint, either through throwing it in the post or driving it and making plays. And of course, I thought we were very unselfish and we shared the ball. We had 18 assists. So that just shows we moved the basketball and we made connecting plays, you know, for one another. Harris knows you're probably not thrilled with the amount of points you gave up today and, and, and the, no. total, the, total, the defense. <laughs> I won't total, sleep but, tonight. <laughs> but, but what did you see kind of flip between the first half and the second half defensively? Did you like how they, they kind of adjusted and were able to? to up the intensity on that end? Well, it always starts with a sense of urgency. I thought we had a much better sense of urgency in the second half, sense of urgency in getting to three-point shooters, sense of urgency in our rotations. I thought we were just moving a lot quicker. And, and I think, you know, Jalen going down, you know, and our guys kind of been in a huddle. I thought they really rallied around Jalen's uh, ailment and really, you know, made some plays there too because, you know, that was something that was being talked about, you know, and they, I think they wanted to, you know, really respond with him being out and step up in his absence. And I thought guys did that as well. Obviously, there's a lot of new pieces to, to this lineup. Do you, do you feel like you got a sense of the different combinations that you can, you can have? How, how much are you kind of still getting a feel for, for what you have on this team as you get ready for the regular season? Still getting a feel for him. Uh, of course, we'll be better from this game because there's some things I learned about our guys that, that we can build on. And that's what will happen, you know, during this preseason. You know, we have another exhibition game. We have another opportunity to kind of see our guys in a different environment and, and you know, work on our rotations again as well. And that's going to be, you know, hugely important with 11 new guys. So uh, that's what we're doing. And practice is hard to simulate that because each team is going against the other team. So as much as you can change jerseys and put different guys with players, which we do, 
it's still nothing like playing a game where we're all on the same bench and you're rotating guys in in that situation. Coach, one of the main things talked about during the media day was the backcourt acquisitions, but the frontcourt showed out tonight, Keyshawn Hall having a big game with Stafford Dion showing some great flashes. Give your thoughts on that. Oh, absolutely. You know, those guys give us the versatility. I think we talked about us being a very versatile team. I think that's kind of been a theme of ours. And I think it showed today just the versatility that we have. You know, Keyshawn can play outside. Keyshawn can play inside. You know, Mustafa can go outside, shoot threes, and he can also put the ball on the floor. He can also post. So those guys give us the ability to play them in different areas on the floor, which is something that uh, we were looking to be able to do. So I'm excited. As you mentioned, our guard play is, is, is solid. And our, and our post play is solid as well. So now we just have to make sure these pieces just continue to fit and get better as we go forward. I mean, seeing Mustafa at such a young age run with the starters and go against veterans on uh, the Eagles team, I mean, what did you see like of him specifically that you liked the most? You know what? I, I love the way he was competing. You know, that's the main thing you have to be able to do at any position on the floor is, is your ability to compete. I thought he really was taking on the challenge, you know, for them. You know, I thought they did a really good job there for their Keyshawn. I mean, he's a big, big guy in the low post. He's physical. He's experienced. I knew that would be a great challenge for, for Mustafa because I watched how he played last year versus us. I watched him play during the season as we we're scouting him, and he's a tough competitor down there. He's physical. He's athletic. He can make plays, and uh, I think he showed a lot of that today. But it was good for Mustafa to see the level of player that he's going to have to face on a nightly basis. You know, as, as we continue to move through the season, and I think he'll only get better at competing against guys like that, the more he's able to see him and find out what he needs to do to be successful. Uh, Coach, this team is characterized by a defensive identity, and that kind of manifested with the Neals chase down block in the first half, followed by the help from Benny to deny them again. Despite the early struggles defensively, how nice was it to see multiple efforts on that side of the floor? Uh, that's key. You know, when we watch film, that's one of the things we're going to show is, is multiple efforts. Guys not quitting on plays. I mean, to win on this level, you can't quit on plays. You have to make multiple efforts. One won't be enough here because everyone has talent. And I think you saw that. That epitomizes kind of how I want to see our team, you know, approach games, how hard we have to play on a possession-by-possession possession basis. Coach, it seems like one of the things this team uh, has gotten is be the ability to create their own shots. The last season, a lot of their, their points came off of fast breaks and, and quick passes, but it seems like players are getting into their spots and finding their stroke. No, absolutely. I think we have guys that can go off the bounce, a few more guys that can go off the bounce now to complement the guys we have that can shoot the basketball. So I think it's a good compliment. You know, we talked about the pieces having to fit, I believe, you know, during media day. The pieces have to fit. And so when we're, out, we're, we're recruiting, we wanted to make sure all the pieces work well with one another. And we still have to get chemistry and continuity. Of course, that's just through playing. But we know through our research that these pieces should fit well together. Now we just got to get them comfortable playing with each other all on the same bench and that in practice where you're just going against one another. Uh, Coach, you had Benny, Mustafa, and Rokas all showed physicality and defensive prowess down low today. How encouraging was their performance given that they are new faces to this team? Uh, very encouraging. You know, a lot of these guys are taking on new roles. You know, Benny's taking on a new role for us. He's playing multiple positions, which has been good. He's played some four, he's played some five, and we're going to continue to need that versatility from him. You know, Mustafa, of course, just being a freshman, younger, just everything he had to go through in the preseason, and now he's going to play against, a, you know, a very good, you know, FGCU team. They're going to have a really good year. They're talented. Uh, they're well coached. So we're going to have to make sure that, you know, he continues to grow from this experience. And then, you know, with guys like Rokas, you know, Rokas is going to help us. Rokas is a very versatile big guy as well. You know, tonight was a tougher game for him and for Elijah because, you know, when they size down, which they did, and they go five out. Now you, you have a lot of perimeter guys who can shoot threes, and that's just not what big guys are used to defending. And so we had to make some adjustments. And so they weren't able to play as probably as many minutes that they would have played in a traditional matchup. But, you know, that's something for us to learn too, that we're gonna have to put the matchups out there or the lineups out there that can be successful against different opponents. And each guy needs to be ready for that opportunity. And, oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, Jordan didn't necessarily shoot the ball well, but he led the team with six assists. Uh, how important was his versatility and willingness to contribute in other parts of the game despite the shots not falling? Oh, it was really good. And, it, you know, I learned a lot more about a player when, when they miss shots than I do when they're making them. You know, it's, it's, it's nothing to learn when a guy's making shots so he can shoot the basketball, but we knew that. It's what you do when you're not making shots. And his ability to continue to play hard, go to the next play, not dwell on missing and making shots, made a lot of plays for his teammates. 
says a lot about who he is. And that's what I learned. I was very excited about that because I already know he can make shots and can score. But now I'm seeing, oh, when it's not going your way, you know, who are you? And he showed that he's a team player. He was selfless and made the right place. Coach, you mentioned the team rallying around Jalen Sellers after he went down. Barring any updates from this injury, how do you hope to keep that character of the team um, possibly missing him uh, if he doesn't? Well, what we need to do is we need to, we need to still, we need to every day, you know, guard our culture. That's part of our culture. And so what you saw these guys exhibit, you know, when he went down is, is what we working on and what we talk about, how we need to be as people, how we need to be as men. And so you saw that caring for a fellow teammate or a fellow person. These are all things we, we, we really do preach, you know, on the regular. And we will continue to do that because if we're not talking about them things, you know, they may not be picking them up. And so I think us showing who we are as people, as their coaches, also, you know, emphasizing these things as a team, I think are very, very important. And then they, they show us who they are. You know, they show their character when that happens. It wasn't as if someone was selfishly thinking about them, what they can get out of it. They were looking at wanting to do something for their teammate to make sure that, you know, we go out the right way in that type of game and finish it out right after what he went through. Uh, FGCU obviously shot a high volume from the perimeter today and they made those 12 threes. Uh, how important is it to have consistent on-ball defense and timely help going forward, especially with a matchup coming up like Texas A&M? Oh, you're absolutely right. That's going to be very, very important for us. Uh, you know, guarding the basketball, it starts there. You know, we have to do a really good job of guarding the ball. Then we have to do, you know, a very good job of understanding the scouting report and understanding what the scouting report says is what we have got to execute. And, you know, we didn't execute the scout as well as I would have liked. But again, you know, it's, it's the first game, 11 new players. Uh, some of these things I expect. I expect to grow from here and get better. You know, every time we step on the court, that's what we have to do. But some great lessons for us to see on tape, great ways for us to improve. And I just can't wait to get back in the gym with us so we can get to work on some of the things I know we can shore up. That's it. Last one. That's one more. Um, Mikey Williams, he got some playing time today. The crowd gave him a huge standing ovation. Players, uh, people in the crowd calling for his name. What did you see out of him? How I'm really, really happy that Mikey was able to get out there. As I said before, here's a young man who missed a full year of competition last year in basketball. And then you're here for seven weeks. I think you get ready to approach his eighth week this week for us with so much coming at you, another level, uh, comparatively, what's going on. And that's why I said before, he just needs to run his race. He's going to be terrific. I mean, I've watched him in practice. He has all the characteristics and ability to be a terrific player. It's just a function of getting out there, getting his feet wet, and learning from each practice and each game that he's in. Because the talent's definitely there. I'm excited about you know, what I see in him. He has to continue to grow in the process and, uh, and run his own race and don't let you know someone else you know, run, or run someone else's race. He needs to just run his race. If he does that, he's going to be fine. He's going to be terrific. He's exciting, and I, I've been really enjoyed coaching him. All right. Thanks, y'all. Thank you, it. Coach.